Mike, it's Joe from Wob. Uh, I'm having some door problems, and I totally use some advice. So give me a call back, uh, and yeah, we'll chat. Cool. Thanks, man. And we're back. Door problems. Door problems. Part two. Hopefully that audio came out well. If not, I'll I'll pump it. It, up. it came up. Yeah. So we'll be all we'll right. We'll pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. What? What? So we were at Red Cypress, like we mentioned, and Jeff wants to touch on the beer that's weeping Central Florida yes. and some of Pompano Beach. So Jeff, take it away. The beer. Uh, this beer, having been at World of Beer for you know years now, um, it's you hear all the rumors, everything that's going around when everybody releases a beer, and it's always like, "Have you had Cigar City's new one?" And this and that. Well, it's so great that for the last month, at least seven, eight people all the way down when we were in south florida somebody brought it up is talking about red cypress's carl ipa it's a northeast ipa uh northeastern style um which is like the new craze in ipas we talked about a little bit that sure. that juicy um floral citrus hop kind of howdy juice bomb yep unfiltered ipa and they uh they did one and i will tell you that this beer is reputation is already like viral freaking marketing for itself just its name people are telling me about it somebody goes man i went to red cypress have you had the carl yet every time sure. yeah, 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 you yeah. know and it's uh we have it in front of us now yep. i've tried Little a samples. few sips of it i, I just i just tried mine i i love it it is every bit as good as what everybody's saying it is yeah. and uh it's a lot of grapefruit super uh you say it a lot it's a uh, super heady topper-esque you know which is that northeastern style ipa except not like heady topper Heady Topper's multi-dimensional, and put that on my grave. It's this, the best. It's the best. It's the best RPI you can get. No, Carl's fantastic. Mine's is a little bit warmer than I would like. I want yeah. it a little bit colder, but um, all grapefruit. Just grapefruit. It's it's cloudy, right? It's a little cloudy. Lots of grapefruit. A little bit uh, of hop. A lot of malt. It's hazy. I hazy. wouldn't say it's cloudy, but it's hazy. Um, Just grapefruit bomb. No real hop distinction. You could drink. It's blended very You could drink well. ten of these in a day. Oh, fuck yeah. Like grapefruit scoping. It's almost like grapefruit scoping a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit less funk and a little bit more floral. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. The um, the hops, um, we're not sure what hops go in this, but it plays off the grapefruit very well to where you don't really pick up the hops, but it just adds to the the, the grapefruit bomb. And I know, uh, shout out to Dave from Florida Beer Blog. Um, This is one of the the crawlers I brought down for him. And he texted me a couple days after we came back. He was like, yo, have you had the crawl yet? I was like, no, I'm a shitty person. The brewery's down the street from me. I haven't had it. He's like, an all caps grapefruit bomb, and he's 100 percent correct. Yeah, this is a great beer. It's uh, it's its reputation is is insane. I can't tell good. the ABV. I'll, I'll put in the video the ABV. Yeah, but it, it has to be at least seven. Its reputation's already blowing up all over Central yeah. Florida, down as far as South Florida now. Um, if you see it, the thing is, I actually just was talking to Ryan right before we went on the show, and I was like, "When are you putting Carl in distribution?" And they're like, <laughs> "We're not. If we're gonna keep it for <laughs> we're, ourselves." We're, we're, we're. So. You got to go to Red Cypress to get it, uh, or if you got a buddy in Central Florida, send you a growler or crowler, because sure. uh, they both growler and crowler here. Um, you would you would be very happy to get this beer. It's right. incredible. It is uh, as good as some of the rare, uh, hard to find stuff from the Northeast like is. The Julius that everyone seems to have a huge boner over, and I don't know why, but it's as good as it's those as Northeastern good as this one. It's things. It's a grapefruit. Julius is, I think, orange. I believe. But you should get it, definitely. Come here to get it. Come to Red Cypress to get this beer. And, th- and not to put Red Cypress' business too much out there, but when we were talking before the show, they are going to make another New England-style IPA Correct. within that this will, year. That will get within uh, the year. a little bit of distro. Right. Uh, we don't know the flavor, and we're not going to tell you because that's, that's, their, their, that's their privacy, more or less. But uh, we did ask – Jeff did ask if, if about the distro. He said, no, not this one, but – we have some things coming up later this year, and we're, we're planning on another New England-style IPA, but that's that's all I'll say. I'll leave it at that. I'll say this. So, uh, so stay tuned for that one. It'll, it'll probably frustrate you, but it's a smart move on their part to take a beer like this that has that reputation and keep it for themselves. And uh, I think that it is definitely a beer that people should and will come into Red Cypress for. Absolutely. Like I think this is yeah. their if they have a if they had a flagship beer that's gonna bring people in like Bo Egan's with their heffin' awesome that they never have on tap. <laughs> Bobby, put the freaking beer on tap. Don't worry, Bobby, I got your back. 
every time it's not on tap. I know. It was on there last week when we were there. I know. I heard. But they had their Cherrywood Smoked Porter, which was pretty good. I just and want Heffin Awesome. I'm leaving in two days. I want Heffin Awesome. But anyway. I'll figure it out. I digress. We'll get you some. It's a beer that people will get excited about. That the buzz around town is is there, and uh, it's unique. If you're in Central Florida, I've been saying it now for a while. If you're in Orlando and you're looking for a good brewery, you have to go to, you have to go to Red Cypress. It, it makes it, that Red Cypress makes everybody's list. Yeah, regardless of if it's your favorite or not. Bowiegas, we all know Bowiegas is my favorite. But if you were to ask me, hey Mike, what's your top three breweries in in the Central Florida area? Red Cypress will always be number two, a close number two. Yeah. But Wiggins first, and then Red Cypress is right behind them. And then third place, I, I would have to probably think about. Probably Ocean Sun, but we'll see. I haven't been there yet. It's good. It's it's, it's pretty solid. Um, but, yeah. I can't even think of a third. But we're pretty below average. It's a little sad, but like a bunch I'd be, of new uh, breweries. I'd be, like, ready to say, like, 10-10, and I, and I don't even like them. Yeah, well, there's a lot of new breweries opening up in, or- in Orlando really soon. Sanford, Sanford Brewing's opening up. I don't know when, but hopefully it's soon. So I would say Celery City, and they're not even a brewery, just because Celery City's <laughs> fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Celery City's like one of the coolest craft bars. Dude, I love Celery City. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. a cool craft bar. Yeah, my, my, all the my, taps my, are my celery, celery stocks. City, yeah. all, the cra- all the taps are celery stocks. They like, just have like a whole, a whole cool thing going on. And yeah. I think we talked about that, but you know that the real taps are behind you, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're they're coded by the number, yeah. so like you see the all celery stocks. But if you look behind you, like tap one will have the actual the tap actual of what's beer's on. Tap handle, yeah, it's and fucking all great on idea. the wall behind you. Yeah, it's great. So idea. like, oh, that's what the tap handle does look like. Yeah. But I, I I love it's just sucks it so far. For and their me. patio's cool. They have a cool. That's yeah, a good craft cool. spot, man. And they're also expanding too. They're doubling. And that's they're in also Sanford. A whiskey bar too. That's in Sanford. Go there. Yeah, it's go, awesome. Go there sure. And then go to West End afterwards and just get fucked up. Or go West End is super cool. Go to West End first because they have happy hour till nine p.m., which is two for ones. What's their on What's their shot? Sunshine State shot. Sunshine think, yeah. State bomb. Bomb. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. They it's do like the citrus stuff vodka and something else and, and Red Bull and it's yeah. just delicious. So yeah. So Jeff wanted to, wanted to talk about the Carl. It's 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 the craze around such a Florida beer scene. And then my last beer on my flight is, of course, my favorite from Red Cypress. Still, including Carl, uh, Death Roll, best best stout, <laughs> best all around stout. <laughs> but we're gonna have a little fun in the second part. We got we got a little serious the first part, and that's okay. A lot of news to catch up on. But Lots of news. The second Current part, events. yeah. The second part, we're gonna we're gonna get creative again. Our wedding episode hit. We're almost at 200 views. I and think I one thought, of our dumbest like, episodes. Yeah, I like texted Mike the other day. Idea, like, I idea wise, I'm I like, think I don't even dumbest. know what our audience is anymore because like we somehow hit a lot of views on a on our bachelor party idea episode. <laughs> yeah, <who's actually> <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, show. and Funky and Funky Buddha is only at like 15 views. He's like, I haven't even pushed Funky Buddha out yet, and then he did, and it like hit 100 in, in an hour. And I'm like, all right, never mind. <laughs> like, I, I guess they still like beer. I, I don't know. I I just. Sometimes fully, you guys surprise us with your loyalty, yeah, man. Because yeah, yeah. like I was like, we took that episode. We were just like burn out on beer. Yeah, and we, we were like, we, we just need to do, beer, yeah. we just need to do something fun and different. And you guys all liked it, so yeah. It was thanks. It's, it, yeah, <laughs> I have to fully push out the episodes. Or is it like, no our, is it like our second most viewed episode? It's definitely in the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is beer styles we're drinking still the still number one best title of an Actually, episode? Actually, let me ever. let me look that up. So we'll uh, now. I'm curious. So. While I'm looking that up, let me pull up YouTube here. Um, our second idea for the or the second topics idea was a little bit some more creative. I think more creative than the fuck than the uh, the wedding. So we're, what we're gonna do is me and Jeff are gonna build the best drive-through, like the drunk late night, drunk late night drive-through the, menu. Right, but there's rules, so we're, we're gonna compile one item from every single fast food joint. And then that will be the ultimate late night drive through menu. All right. So as we speak here, I'm going to go from the very bottom. So Red Cypress, our episode with Ryan was that was number seven. Episode number seven, right? 96 views. Good. Solid. It's good. For six Next episodes episode in or seven is, episodes in? Yeah, eight, the eighth episode with Jeff's rant on card sodas. Awesome. As of the day of this recording, 121. You guys love that rant. I'll rant about it again if you want. Okay. I think the worst titled episode we've ever done Beer styles we're drinking. Episode nine, two eighty nine, killing it. You killing guys it. wanted to hear about it. And you know what? We're drinking different styles now. Let's redo that episode. Yeah, 
And then uh, the next one, we had Preston on. So that was a two-parter. Preston, good, good that guy. That was one episode, but well, one full episode. We broke up. Uh, Hidden Life has a craft beer podcaster, 71. That's fine. Uh, and then the spaghetti beer, 151. So that was kind of a dud, which is fine. We can't, we can't make everything gold. Well, I mean, you have to have a couple spaghetti silvers Western wasn't and good. bronzes. <laughs> but we, we, we pull ahead, Jeff. Hold on, wait. Can I say something really quick? Because you just made me think about it. Go. That bottle shop I was talking about down yeah. in Jupiter. Yeah. Mamma Mia pizza beer That's all over the go place. Go fuck yourself. So much Mamma Mia pizza yeah, beer. No one buys that shit. <laughs> so we pull things together. After that spaghetti Western beer, it's the spaghetti beer and DCBF homebrews. We were at Coasters. Ah, oh, Coasters. Great time. 204. Nice. Next one, we did the vertical for the Bourbon County Stout from 13 to 15. 100 views. That's episode 12. That's weird that was only 100. You guys don't like Bourbon County, huh? I was expecting, I was expecting that to some get a controversial. Lot more. Uh, yeah. I thought that was going to be some controversial commenting. Like, fuck so, AB and fuck Goose Island. I'm, I'm happy with how that turned <laughs> out. I was expecting a little bit more, but yeah, 100 views is still fine. Uh, then we had our, our first ever and only beer battle last snow versus DBC Death by Coconut, 140. It's not bad. We can do some more of that. Yeah, we I that. think we should do more head-to-head us versus each other things because I whooped your ass last time. Shut the fuck. No, you didn't. And then Dude, yours was salt water. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the maple bacon coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we had the Canty on the Rose and the the oh, South Florida. One. That was forty-six views. That was a dud, uh, which is fine. I was expecting that. Then we had Jesse on from Use Hair Use Bottles, Texas Pierce. That's only fifty-one. I was I'm really upset about that one. I thought that was a lot better, but we rise again, Jeff. We uh, shall rise like the phoenix a, from the ashes. Right after that one, we had the Ballast Point Scope and Horizontal, 173. Yeah. Well, Carlos, what a great host. Our Carlos, co-host, you're the man, our yeah. guest, yeah. our friend. Then du- our duplicated Mabel- MBCP or Maple Bacon, 150. Yeah. You guys should have tried mine. It was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. And then Mike's birthday, Beer Palooza, 100, which is fine. That was an hour 45 minutes. We're, we're getting show. triple digits on most of them. Yeah. We're doing good. The Good, the Bad, and MIA Brewing, probably my favorite title because I thought of that all on my own. 162. Then we are six point brewing and buy our, our first ever buy or sell. 68 views. I'm kind of buttered about that. I thought it was a Do great. Do you guys not like buy or sell? I loved it. Comment back on that. Yeah. Tell us if you like it. I like buy or sell. And then we had our Bells Brewing and our Florida's Must Visit Breweries, episode 20, 147. And then. Palky and Deason. <laughs> yeah. And then our Celebrity Groomsman and our Biopic Movie, episode 21. 200 and. 193. Two, okay, yeah, so 200. It's 200. And then uh, Funky Buddha is currently at 102. And we, I released that. Yesterday. I pushed it out about two days ago. Yeah. And then the other ones, honestly, I haven't edited the other ones yet. But by the time you guys listen to this, they're all out. Mm-hmm. So back to the topic. So we're doing good. I think we're kicking ass. Yeah. We're doing really good. So let's, let's, let's go off. Let's, let's name out the fast food joints here. So we got, we got McDonald's. Mac. We got, we got BK the Lounge. Excuse me. Oh man, we got Taco Bell, of Bell. course. Or or TV Taco Bell. Um, Chuckers. Chuckers. You Cause, need. Cause we're you know what though? I think you also need. Um, you need like uh, steak and shake. Because that's a late night place. I'll give you that. All right. You need that. I mean, I'll, I'll give you that. That's fine. Steak and shake. We gotta do. Um, I, I don't want to include Arby's because fuck Arby's. Yeah. Well, they have the meats. Yeah. Fuck Arby's. Um, I feel like I'm. For, oh, Wendy's. Fucking a. Wendy's. I almost mm. forgot Wendy's. I think and I know then, what I like there. And then what else? Uh, for like a, another one, we need more. We got more. I mean, well, if, if it's for drunk late night, you can't include Chick Fil A, but we really should include Chick Fil A. Right, we'll, we'll do Chick Fil A. I mean, we all know what the answer is: the classic freaking fried chicken sandwich is no. the bomb. I actually hate Chick Fil A, but that's another. How episode. on earth do you hate Chick Fil A? You should kill yourself. I think it's just overpriced, man. What you get? Um, KFC's closed. They're not open late. Popeyes isn't open late. Oh. Um, God, but KFC, that'd be really good. It. Just get like a bucket of chicken at night. Subway's not fast food, even though it's semi fast. I think I think we're good. I think we're good. Just like the dream menu from those the places. Dream, yeah, the dream Got menu. It. So rule is we have McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Checkers, Steak and Shake, Wendy's, and Chick fil A. I think that's a good list. Yeah. Um, for fast food. I mean we could do Del Taco. Fuck no. What are we gonna put on like their fucking nachos? I don't really like Del Taco. Anyway, a burrito. Right, so, so we're leaving Del Taco out willingly. Um, so the rule is you have to pick one item. Yeah, yeah. Well, Del Taco sucks. It's like so you're, poor you're man's drunk, Taco Bell. And we're building the ultimate drive-through menu. 
Got it. One one ion from each place. Back and forth, arguing per yeah, each one. We're, we're arguing. We're go, we're gonna go. Okay, go. So McDonald's. Mac D's. So I had to pick one ion from McDonald's. I'm a sucker for ice cream, so I would have to get a McFlurry. It's a flavors, solid choice. Flavors doesn't matter. Oreo, Kit Kat, Reese's doesn't matter. It's a solid choice. However, I, I think, have these all picked out in my mind. I think I'm going go with ice cream. the classic of what McDonald's is, and that's the Big Mac. When okay. you're drunk, you want that greasy, just disgusting burger, and that's a Big Mac. Okay. I mean, That'll I, fill you up, too. I don't disagree with you, but... I would but buy, of course, I would, you have to have you have to have a dessert. So we maybe we have, take a dessert. We also on have it. other places we're going to. So yeah, but that's the that is the creme de la creme of desserts <laughs> for fast <laughs> okay. food. So like a say, Reese's McFlurry is a top. That's a top that's tier dessert. A regular size. You don't have fucking large. Can you believe that? That's bullshit. So I go dessert. You go Big Mac. I go Big Mac on that. On the yeah. McDonald's, right? Yeah, I so can crush a Big Mac. We we leave McDonald's and there's a Burger King, so we're going to Burger King because we're drunk. We don't care, right? Mm-hmm. So it's one item you would get from Burger King. Onion rings. They're the only fast not, food place that has O-rings. I was not O-rings. expecting that. O-rings really. with the zesty sauce. For sure. The only reason I go to to Burger King ever is to that I can get the same sandwich as anywhere else, but I can get onion rings with it. I will get the Whopper. That's where I get my burger. Whopper with cheese, no bacon. Dude, it's all about the O-rings. We well, can't get O-rings... Well, I mean, that's I'll what you just pick, get right? O rings. That's okay. Literally, so just get those. You go burger. You go O rings. I go Whopper. I gotta get the. I gotta get the Whopper. We man. could split a value meal. That's not part I'll of. I'll just that's get not the part O-rings. of this. this <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, cause I get a Whopper with cheese, and it's not on your rings, please. Mm-hmm. Okay, so our second window. Everybody knows you have to Burger wait King's that. all about the onion rings. And then you have to wait half an hour because Burger King's slow as fuck. No, not nearly as bad as. Uh, Arby's the, is not much better. The um, Arby's, you have to wait a while. What's the? And what's then you feel like shit the after. The Panda, Panda Express. Panda Express, throughs? never had a problem. Like a billion. Never had like a problem. You have to wait. You have to wait like an hour. Burger King has the worst time. I don't even know how the fuck they're still open. Because of the O rings. I'm taking this to Twitter on Burger King. Your shit's weak. It takes too long. And then you fuck oh up half the orders. Oh my god, Death Roll is so fucking good. All right, so Wheelie Burke, you got your onion rings. Death Roll is so good. You have your Big Mac. And you're like, hey Mike, let's go to Taco Bell. We'll go to Taco Bell. Cheesy that's gordita fine. crunch. Motherfucker, that's what I would have said. Of course. It's top tier item. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> Cheesy gordita crunch. <laughs> yeah. Or the flatbreads, but the flatbreads aren't on the menu all the time. No, it's... it's Cheesy gordita crunch. The only be, other yeah. arguable one would maybe be either the uh, the crunch wrap Supreme mm-hmm. or a Chalupa. But a Chalupa is like uh, just a shitty version of a Cheesy gordita crunch. Yeah. So you just got to go for the cheesy yeah, gordita crunch. I think they're like close to the same price. Get the extra cheese in the shell, man. What the fuck? It's awesome. Cheese, yeah, oh, but do they do have that? They do have that quesalupa now. That, That's like, also like four dollars though. That cheese stuffed shell chalupa. I like I like Taco Bell's quesadillas. Dude, I think Taco Bell is just the drunk place. Like we could take their whole menu. I feel like shit every time I go there. And I, All right. Oh fuck. Two cheesy gordita crunches is, yeah, is for the sure. for top sure. tier yeah. drunk item though. For sure. You heard it here first at the bar podcast. So next stop on this. Fast food, unhealthy, heart attack driven journey. <laughs> We're going to Checkers, Jeff. What, what are you getting at Checkers? Fries. Fuck anybody else. Checkers has the best fucking fries. You said Greasy that, as fuck. You said that before, and I and I I want to agree with you because um, we don't have fries yet on we the menu. Occur- yeah. So you, you do have onion rings, right? Currently in your possession. So I would buy a, a onion rings over Checkers fries. So maybe for me, it's not the best item. Um, Checkers has like a really good grilled chicken sandwich. I don't know what it's called, but it's like with cheese on it and shit, and like a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> like every other fucking grilled like, chicken like sandwich. Ran- yeah, it's probably like it's probably like the Asiago Ranch, ranch <laughs> chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's a really good one. So I would probably get that at Checkers. Um, late night. I, I mean, realistically, yeah. If you're going to Checkers, you're going for the fries, though. So Absolutely. I might as well just say fries. I mean, they have good shakes too. Let's not forget the shakes. Oh, I I don't have a dessert yet. You don't have a dessert yet, no? I'm going to go shakes. You sure? All the shakes. Okay. I'm going shakes. I need a dessert. All right, because right, we got steak and shake next, brother. Yeah, but We're I already know it? what I'm getting at steak and shake. Frisco melt. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, that patty melt is just <laughs> oh, too good. Oh, it's so gross, but so good. Number four. Too much grease. It's so a number four. Almost too much grease, yeah. but it's so good. Frisco fucking melt all day, every day. Now, you picked your dessert. You got your shake at Checkers, but we're at Wendy's, man. 
You're not going to get a Frosty? I actually don't like chocolate, so I don't do Frosties. That's vanilla fine. Frosty is more or less just a thick vanilla milkshake, so that's right. dumb. Um, no, that's where you get the Asiago fried chicken sandwich. Really? With bacon. Really? I pussed out. I get the other uh, spicy nugs, man. Spicy, spicy nuggets. nugs? Yeah. That's like not even chicken. It's like pink. Neither is your fucking chicken sandwich. Yeah, that's a fried chicken breast. That's real chicken. I roll my eyes. Wendy's, I feel like, would be the hardest for me because everything that lately I've they're like good at everything, but not great at anything. Right, right. They built a Wendy's literally like a five minutes from my house, like walking, five minutes, and uh, it's on Curry Ford. Um, I I would get it would be the hardest because I would want to get everything. I get everything. It's just their fries are really good. Fries are okay. No, then now they have the natural cut ones. They're good. I like them. I, I, I like the old Too one. much salt. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could go dessert with Wendy's. You get chicken sandwich with, with Wendy's. You get the yeah, bacon okay. here. The Frosty, though, let's just say this. For the record, I hope you all hate me for this. The Frosty is a bottom-tier dessert. It's 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 thin ice cream or thick milkshake, and that's it. And it's just chocolate ice cream. I think Frosty. That's all it is. I think it stands by itself. It's, I think, the most different out of all of them. Than a McFlurry? In terms of flavor, yeah, dude. Bullshit. McFlurry, McFlurry is just a shake with... Snack cookies at it. McFlurry is, it has all and kinds blend of it shit in it. They half-ass blend it together and they leave the fucking spoon Yeah, there there's all kinds of good stuff in there. I'm not saying I'm getting dessert at Wendy's, but the Frosty does have a place, has its own place. I think the Frosty is the most overrated dessert on the planet Earth. When I was in college, now I'm not going to say now, when I Do was in Do you dip college, your fries in a Frosty? It's awesome, but that's not what I'm referring to. When I was in Lakeland going to uh, Polk State, my, the community college there, for some reason, there was a Wendy's by campus, and for seven straight days, I got a large chocolate frosty with my my number one. And I let me tell you, that ruins your intestines. I would imagine it's I not had, ice cream. I had the deuces hard for like like these, if you ate some Haribo sugar free gummy bears. Yeah, like it every day, like three times a day, for like seven straight days it was horrible. And I didn't have a frosty for like four years after that because it just ruined me. You know what's really bad? Personal you, information um, about Mike. Have you ever uh, seen the thing? If you leave a McFlurry out and let it melt, what it looks like? No. It's really bad. Do you ever see like the the 10-year-old French fries? and the, the, the No, I've burgers? heard about it, though. I heard they look exactly the same. They look exactly the same. It's actually really disgusting, but fuck it. I mean, we all know what hot dogs are made out of, have right? You ever, <laughs> have you ever seen the thing? If, you know if you leave an ice cream sandwich out in the sun, it doesn't melt? Because it's not ice cream. It's like gelatin and like it's like vanilla flavored gelatin inside there. If you put a, a, a one of those ice cream sandwiches out in the sun, it will not melt no matter how long you leave it out there. It gets warm, but the ice cream doesn't melt. That's actually really scary. That that gross is, is, is a thing. Disgusting. Yeah. So is this menu that we're going through. It's all. Fucking yeah. Disgusting. I mean, I'll be honest with you. All I'm I being would, nauseous just thinking about I would this just menu. order like as many cheesy gordita crunches and onion rings <laughs> as I could. <laughs> that's, that's what I would order. <laughs> they should merge Burger King and Taco Bell, just like, like Taco God. Bell and Pizza Hut. Why is Taco Bell with Bobo ass Long John Silvers? Like, you see that all the yeah, time? Yeah, the partner no stores? Eats that Nobody shit. eats Long John Silvers. Yeah, do you yeah. even keep that in stock? It's like the same people like, who. Do you eat. even pretend that you serve ch- shrimp? Well, no. just like, why do you have a vanilla frosty? All the real people get the fucking chocolate. Chocolate. I get vanilla frosty. That's why they you're have fucking one. weird. I don't eat chocolate. You're weird. I know I'm weird. But I don't like chocolate. We have one more stop, Jeff. Do we? I thought we were done. No, we have one more stop. Probably for most people, the best. No way. Taco Bell's the best. No, we have. We're at Chick Fil A. Well, Chick Fil A is not like late night. It's not technically late night, but they for Orlando, Florida, is technically the premier of fast food. All right. For what these, are you gonna go with? Because I have a few items on here that I could go with. I'm not a big fan of Chick-fil-A. I think they're overpriced for what you get. But I, it's 50-50 with me. I either get the waffle fries or I get their cookies and cream shake. I do double dessert. So you don't do the chicken sandwich? No. All right. If you're going to do two items, I'm also going to do two items. The, I'm 50-50. I can go either way. The classic just Chick-fil-A sandwich, the fried chicken sandwich with the pickles, is top tier as That's, top tier That gets. sandwich isn't worth fucking $6. It's that not meal, $6. It's $4. Meal. It's not, dude. All right. It's a whole other topic of how much I Chick fil A. But number two, and almost equally as important, is large sweet tea. Because their sweet tea is that. really fucking good. I'll give you that. Like, so good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just sugar, but it's yeah. just delicious. That's for, that's. I give you that. You, okay. Do you think Chick fil A sweet tea is better? Or than is, McDonald's? No. Publix is sweet tea. I, I think Chick fil A sweet tea is better than all of them. 
Yeah, and public sweet okay. teas. You know what? Public sweet tea used to be like the bomb when it was like the only thing. Now they have like blueberry and green tea and peach and mango Their and pomegranate all that stuff. And that sweet shit tea sucks. Is fucking bomb, dude. I think they all suck. You suck. Now, their original sweet tea is really good, but I'm going to go with Chick-fil-A sweet tea all day. And you know what, people? Stop flavoring sweet teas. Just leave them a sweet tea. No, no. Mike says it's okay. Don't do it. They're terrible. Do it. it. Sweet tea is sweet tea. You don't need mango (laughs) sweet tea. You don't need pear (laughs) sweet tea. (laughs) You can say that with IPAs. Oh, we don't need... But you keep adding blueberries and fucking mangoes and shit. You know what, though? Blueberry green tea by, like, Arizona tea. Oh, my God. I love... I'm on an Arizona kick right now. That blueberry green tea is, like, damn, that's good. I, I'm I'm drinking their uh, Arizona's uh, uh, fuck Arnold Palmer, but with peach. I'm not big on peach or I mango. Peach. I love peach. And I don't mango. like those fleshy fruits. I don't like grapefruit. I just drink a whole Carl. Yeah, but the Carl's good. It is good. It is a little citrusy though. You still have a beer left. What is that? I do. Well, I'm I'm currently drinking. I'm about to dive in my last beer with a high mileage. It's an amber. Death roll still number one stout. You got the high mileage on yours. I did not know. I got the uh, Bring to Ruckus, which was a very Here, good. Try, um, that. try that one. I like I like the, the the malt on that one. Almost German esque. That's good. That's high mileage. It's caramely. Yeah. Very caramely. That's yeah. nice. What what kind of beer is that? An amber. Amber. Um. I got the uh, the Bring to Ruckus, which I believe cream. is a cream ale, right? Yeah, it's okay. And then I've had better. <laughs> Let's be real. I've had my better. favorite beer, Death Roll. Yep. Which I actually, this is all in the wrong order. Let me go in the right order. I got the Bring to Ruckus Cream Ale. Then I got the Enkel Brun, which is a, uh, it's a Belgian, Belgian Brown, brown Ale. I like that one. I liked it a lot, actually. I thought it was good. Considering it's a Belgian, I'm surprised. Super not Belgian-y, okay. which I think is good. Right. It, it had the Belgian yeast, Thank God, right? but it didn't have the bready yeast that taste. That makes Belgians awful. Um, the, Simple yet complex. The Under Construction Forever, a.k.a. UCF Series number 3 Extra Pale Ale, uh, which I thought was very light. Not overly hoppy, which for me played great. For uh, other hopheads, it probably would have been under underwhelming. Underwhelming, yeah. Um, in case you guys didn't know that, UCF has the moniker of under construction forever because they've been under construction for literally ever. And they continue just expanding and building and putting new <laughs> shit on. And for every one project they complete, they add another another, another three. two or yeah. three. Yeah. And uh, I the whole the whole four years I was there, I don't think I ever walked campus one time without a major building being under construction. And it's been that way for twenty something years. So because um, we're old as fuck. I, nine years since I started college, and I didn't realize yeah, that. I know we started college at the same time. Um. So, yeah, so Under Construction Forever, I, I think, is actually a really cool series for them to do, being yeah. UCF-based, and Ryan went to UCF, and I and believe and Ashlyn did, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. So they both went to UCF. And, I think uh, it's extra cool. I think it's a super cool name. So uh, good extra pale. liked it. Then the Carl, which we talked about, uh, a phenomenal Northeast-style IPA. And then my last one is Death Roll, which I will put toe-to-toe with any everyday stout that you could possibly get and say that it's the best one. If you're going to put this, that's all malt build. There's no, they don't add any. It's just all. all If you put this beer up against any of your go-to dark beers, and I'm not going to just say stouts, but porters too. Sure. uh, Go vanilla porter, but Breckenridge. This beer is better. Great beer. This beer is better. I think so. Um, They should add vanilla to the death roll. If they did a vanilla death roll, I'd probably jizz my pants. I would. Um, Ryan, you're getting an email saying vanilla death roll. You put it up against a brown ale like Newcastle, way better. Oh, yeah. Newcastle's garbage. But beers that people readily buy. Right. Yingling. Um, Yingling. You know, this is a thousand times better. And as as palatable, as sessionable, with way more flavor, I could drink this beer out on the boat. If they put this in cans, I would get a 12-pack and go out on the boat every single fucking time I went on the boat, and I would drink dark beer all day. And the and the best part about dark beers, by the way, for all you people who are like, oh, you want something light and super d- just fucking disgusting like Bud Light out at the beach? No, hey, you don't. Because as it warms up, it tastes like shit, right? And everybody knows that a cold Bud Light's the only way to drink a Bud Light. Yeah. Why drink it in the sun in a 95-degree Florida day and when you know it only tastes good cold? That's why you get a stout, because a stout warms up and tastes as good. You could drink this at fucking 80 degrees and it'll still taste good yeah and then you can black out at one o'clock in the afternoon at funky buddha at fort lauderdale and be a disaster the rest this of the isn't day. And then, this and isn't 12 percent. and then get grumpy as fuck at 10 o'clock where we all want to go out and you're like, okay i think i, I had it i think i had a justification there i literally threw up for half the time i was out <laughs> so <laughs> you guys probably honestly should have left me because you would have had more fun without me but 
I don't know. Me asking this. No, I only had one. I only had one beer funny. Riverside. I had the the, the pops poured by Winwood. I actually, I was, I was bearded out, man. I keep saying I think I had a, a really light beer, but I actually think I had grapefruit sculpin. <laughs> I was Dude, like, I don't remember I had, what you had. I had like a really light beer. I got like a cider or something. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I, I had grapefruit sculpin. I almost got a cider. Well, the first time I went to Riverside Market was after Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Day, <laughs> and I had like nine Imperial Stouts in the last hour. Like that's Saturday for I was and I was so blacked out and. Um, that was the whole story with David Boston walking up when I had like the the wide or the uh, the, the wide the awake. Dude. I had the dude uh, white Russian Imperial Stout. I had a 2013 Hunapu, and I had the wide awake in Kona coffee barrels. Yeah, and I had those three stouts, Imperial Stouts, that are all 10 percent or higher. And I walk up to Boston, and I'm like, "Hey, man, everybody's like really stouted out. Nobody wants to share these with me. Can I like pass them around your group and everything?" And he goes. Oh yeah, why don't you soak them up with your tampon, you pussy, or something? And I'm like, <laughs> all right. So I chugged three Imperial Stouts back to back to back Did in you the puke last that day. No, but I went to Riverside Market that night, and everybody's getting all these freaking beers. Like they're like chilling on on. Well, actually, I'm not gonna say that. Everybody wasn't getting crazy beers. Everybody was getting light beers, but they were getting like good light beers. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I was getting like like ciders and like fucking dog shit pilsners <laughs> and like and just anything that sucked. I was like. I'm like, do you guys have Bud Light? I'll take a Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just had nine Imperial Stouts in the last hour and a half. So, meanwhile, I'm like carrying. I'm like got my totes with like fucking maple bacon in in my in tow, and I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Here? I'm excited because you're only up the street from that when that event comes next year. I am. Uh, I'll be about forty minutes from there. That'd be fucking awesome. Not not that far. Uh, because they're north. They're north end of Fort Lauderdale, and I'm I'm gonna be Jupiter. So. West Palm to Fort Lauderdale is about 45 minutes. So I'll be like right there, Yeah, um, which I'm really excited about. And honestly, uh, where I'm living is is cool. It's younger. It's it's uh, north end of Jupiter, um, so a little bit north of West Palm. So I'm closer to the fun West Palm lifestyle than like the northern Stuart and whatever, you know. Old people. Old people lifestyle. Uh, but I'm also right in between like my work and then going south to do south or funky Buddha or down to Miami for MIA and all that. So it's a really good area. You could be muling um, a lot. You know that, right? I will be uh, I will be, be muling. walking distance um, from TBC or civil society. The places I'm looking at one of the two, I'll be within a two minute walk from those places. Fuck. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. You got it made. You got it made. It's gonna be cool. I uh, can't wait. I hope I'm. Uh, I'm looking at places closer to, to Cuesta Brewing, um, which you, you guys have heard me talk about. I love Tequesta Brewing, and I, I'm probably gonna be closer to them than uh, mm-hmm. than Civil Society. But Civil Society will be, you know, eight minutes away. Yeah. yeah. So. So go through what I had here at Red Cypress. From order, I had the Bring the Ruckus Cream. It was okay. I've had better. I've had worse. Middle style, three 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 point two. If it I'd wasn't it. a cream ale and it was just like a like a pale ale. I think it would have scored uh, higher. I would have scored it higher. Absolutely. And then after that, I had the Deep Roots, which is their hybrid amber. Very good. Then I had their <laughs> Fruit Delatere. You hate it, but you love it. I liked it. it. I drank the whole thing. It's a good I beer. It. I liked it. It was less orangey this time. Um, I guess it was, like th- with it being on tap, is a little bit different than kegged. Um, and then number four, the one I'm drinking currently, is the High Mileage, which is their amber. And then f- my last beer, which I've already had, is the Carl. The High Mileage was good. That's a like that's the, a true amber. Yeah, they say. And amber, the other yeah. one is so the I hybrid. I think it's a German amber. take, though. I, I tasted ger- the German yeast in that. Yeah. And then the deep roots is a is they they call it hybrid. I'm not sure why, but I think it's like just a little hoppier and a little bit. Yeah. More of a little drier. Of a and yeah. But that's what we're having here at the packed red cypress. <laughs> anyway, thanks again for listening and watching, guys. Um, We'll, any, see, any we'll definitely plugs? next. Uh, well, next time you hear this, we're next time be, you hear it, it'll be it'll be the new setup. The new so setup. literally, this episode is the last yes. one where me and Mike for, are face to face for all, for until we do it again. Until we meet up somewhere, either I go down there or you come up here. Um. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, it all goes well. The the makeup of the show might be a little bit different. Um, might be a little bit less editing for you. I hope so. We'll um, but yeah, it should be. Uh, Can't be any worse than now. It should be cool, and, and now it's not that bad. I'll be Just honest with you. Uh, the plugs. Let's see. Um, due I mean, to this home, change, new due home, to this Black change, Marlin. Black Marlin uh, down in, in downtown Stewart. Check us out. Throw up a logo. Going to be really, really cool. Um, completely different concept. We're ready to roll with it. Uh, we're actually currently in construction at this moment. So by the time this airs, the store will have been opened and new concept launched. 
And we'll put um, details of what you guys kind of have. Yep. You know, we'll, beers. We'll, yeah, everything like that. We'll put um, a menu up there. But uh, Black Marlin, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and plug that. We will also, uh, what As I'm going to say is. Episode. Um, Let's not forget about Wob. We should. Yeah, we, uh, we got to give them a, we got to give them a. A shot. They've been thank nice. you, Wob. World um, UCF. Thank you for employing me for two yeah, and a half too. years and for uh, a year and a half. Thank you uh, a for year. letting <laughs> us do the show there. And um, there's always going to be a little soft spot in my heart for Wob. It's uh, was really my first real opportunity in management. Um, I had managed some restaurants prior, but this was a, a corporate training. You know, big big deal, sure. huge learning experience for me and. Uh, I, I love Wob and I, I love the people over at, at my stores, um, Altima and UCF, both just fantastic human beings. And, you know, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss Orlando. Um, we're, we're real Orlando strong at the moment due to, uh, at the time now, very uh, recent um, terrorist attack at Pulse and everybody. I don't think we've done an episode since that. No. And everybody's uh, banded yeah. together and this town's been, been freaking great yeah. uh, since then. I didn't and, realize how diverse right orlando was it's, until that happened it's I was like, wow there's insane so many and there's so things. much support and everybody's just so behind the city right now and it's been it's been cool i'm gonna miss it here um but uh the big thing and i guess we could probably just do a, a commercial like we've done before but sure. i'll plug it here anyway is um because of this change in the show we have that opportunity now where marketing becomes a little bit cooler where we've talked about you guys having the opportunity to come on and do commercials, but now you could come on and be live on our show. Mm -hmm. Um, and all it would take is a webcam, you know, I mean, the audio might not be great if they don't have a mic, but we could make it work. I'm sure Mm -hmm. they would be under, uh, you can understand them. Yeah. It uh, it won't be quote unquote professional, but we could have, you know, we have the opportunity now where if you guys wanted to come on and pitch anything, you could be on live with us. Um, you know, talking to us, not a commercial, not us talking about your product, you talking about your product. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's a really cool opportunity. So, um, I mean, I think we've, we've been given that gift of, of being able to do something super cool with it. And I, I genuinely, like you said before, I think this could be really great for the show. Um, but I think it'll be great for you guys. If you, if you do have, uh, anything you want to market with us, um, just hit us up and we'll, we'll work out a deal. And, uh, now we could even we could have you on the show you know if there's less editing involved these shows might be getting pumped out really quick so yeah. you could be on and then the next week it's on it's on the air yeah so with to go along with what jeff said um yeah we would love to have people on you know live with us um we put a lot of work in to this show um equally i won't say i take all the work but jeff pulls his weight um that to to we're, we're going to be opening up a Patreon page, which is essentially every month you get to sign up to, to donate more or less us money to have certain perks, right? So, you know, so far, you know, we'll have, you know, you can donate a dollar to the show every month, five dollars, however, whatever the monetary value means you have to decide to agree on. And then the per- there's perks every month that come along with that. So I thought about it. I knew this episode was coming. I knew we'd talk about it. But just to kind of clarify that, and we're, we're going to start, you know, having advertising for, for companies and events. And we want you guys to participate and to help, you know, local indie, I guess, business more or less to, to grow. And, you know, the more money we bring in, the more money we can give back out. You know, the Homebrew Fest wasn't a free event. Money was spent for that. So in order for us to, to put these events together to give back to our listeners, we need to have money coming in. That's just the reality of business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um nothing against anybody that's just how you know business works time is money so um we're gonna be putting on a patreon page hopefully hopefully by the time this airs maybe a little bit after we come up with a price we want you guys to sign up and having us having to sit on an episode with us live stream would be a perk to a certain tier of of payment i guess more or less we haven't thought about yet but I mean, with Jeff being gone, I mean, that's something that we can do. We can have, if you guys donate X amount of money, that could be one of the perks is once a month, we'll have a huge, you know, our top donators would be on the show with us and we would have a show for that. Or we can have a Patreon exclusive only episode to where people only get certain episodes if they donate money, something like that. I know Kind of Funny on YouTube does that. Tom and Dan, they're the biggest podcast here. They have a subscription service. Um, I'm not looking for that, in particular. that's too much right. work. But you know, this Patreon thing is going to help us make money so we can throw events, so we can 
we can Give do you guys more, discounts. more we can, like the homebrew festival yeah. more, uh, which is a ton of work for both of us. And, and a lot of, uh, you know, a labor of love that was all free. I didn't make extra money for putting that on and, you know, and, uh, that's okay. Cause it was what we wanted to do right, and it was right. a super cool event, but it's, um, as we move forward, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have advertisements. It's coming. It, it has to, to break happen. it to you. It has to happen. It's easy, man. Every it's podcast easy. does. Every and podcast they're super does quick. it. And they're cool. They're and, quick. you know, we're not, we're going to try not be boring. We're going to try to make them fun, relevant. Um, but, you know, time is money. I spend, this this podcast is an extra, uh, do honestly, at least 20 hours a week for me. Yeah. Just editing. It takes me three days to edit a show about because, you know, I have a life. I, ha- I work another job. I have responsibilities. I have other things going on. So editing is, turns, it turns into my Tuesday through Thursday nights. Is sitting at every a, minute that we spend not talking on the show is like an extra hour of your life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I would like to make some money out of it. Jeff, I would like to pay Jeff for his time. And then, you know, more things come in, more things get put out. Simple as that. More homebrew fest discounts to black Marlin. We can have that. If we have money coming in, top tier people get, you know, a discount to go to black Marlin or, or Wob or, or Wob, anywhere. Or, you know, if we get partners, we can give you guys bottles of beer. Or a discount at Red Cypress or however that's going to work out. So that's kind of what is coming. Advertising's coming soon. Soon after this episode airs, if not when this episode airs. Yep. So once again, Jeff, you got anything else? Anything else you got to say before, it, we, um, before you depart forever? I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy that it's it's been fun. I'm going to miss uh, doing the show, actually doing the show like we do when we sit down and we share beers and we hang out. Um, the interaction is going to be different, obviously. Uh, if, uh, I mean, I'm glad that I actually, last time I went down, I found a good bottle shop. I think anything that you're looking for up here, I will have available down there. So if we wanted to do beer tastings and things like that, I could easily acquire those beers just as easily as you can. So we will, you know, for the most part, be able to do stuff like that where we might not be right next to each other, but we'll still be trying the same beers at the same times and Mm -hmm. talking about them. So, um, the show might be a little bit different, but I think it'll be different for the better. It'll be cooler. Um, it'll the same give unrehearsed bullshit we do every week. The same exact <laughs> shit, and yeah. and we appreciate you guys listening. Maybe if we rehearse more, we'd have we'd have even more viewers. But I think part of our charm is that we don't. So, um, but yeah, I I really I mean I appreciate all you guys listening. I appreciate the chance to do this show, and I'm I'm glad that it's gonna continue despite me leaving. And um, keep listening, guys. Uh, I I genuinely like this is this is something I look forward to every week, and I love it. And uh. It's it's you guys and it's Mike doing all the work, but it's you guys who really make it worth our time and um, yep, hundred percent. And especially Mike's time, um, you don't understand what those what those views and those likes are for us. Especially me. Yeah. When I when I walk in on the Thursday at Wob, I'm like, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Guess what? Guess what? We hit two hundred views. Oh my god! Oh my god! Right. It's just it's. There's a lot of things you guys don't see that the excitement. It's like me giving getting French toast. Oh my God! When I break 100 views, I act the same way as if John Lynn gives me French toast. I told I, you I bought I another squeal. bottle, right? No. I drank. I drank my. Fucker. I drank the bottle that John gave me because I went to that bottle shop and the guy's like, "Yeah, nobody even knows what this is." And I'm like, "This is the best bottle shop ever. <laughs> ever. Nobody <laughs> knows what French toast from Funky Buddha is." And dude, there's my my brother's roommate is like into the craft beer scene down in Jupiter, uh-huh. and he's the one who showed me this bottle shop, and he's I, I brought in. <laughs> Because my brother was like, "Hey, bring some beers down or whatever." So I brought, um, I brought last snow, okay. lemon ring, okay. and uh, and the French toast, and put them in the fridge. And his my neighbor God. comes, his neighbor came over, and he's like, "What are these beers?" And I'm like, "You never heard of Funky Buddha?" And he's like, "He's like, no, not really." I'm like, "Last what? time I was down here, you've been talking about craft beer like you knew everything." And like, yeah. he does, he knows a lot. He's like talking about all the different dogfish head beers, all the Green Man beers, like every like he's not just mainstream breweries either. Yeah. Like he goes in and buys you know, everything. And, and I'm like, you don't know about funky Buddha. And he's like, not really. And I'm like, if you ever see a bomber that comes out from funky Buddha, you buy need it. to buy it instantly. I'm like buy that beer, try it. They're going to become your favorite brewery. Like you need to try them. So I tried them on all three of them. Nobody at the, at the, my brother's house was very big fans of lemon meringue pie. Like I was, I thought lemon meringue pie is great, but it's obviously an acquired taste kind of beer. It's super tart. Yeah. Right. Um, and if you're not into sours, which it's not a sour, but if you're not Tastes into sour, sure like a sour yeah. you, you're not going to like that like beer. Right. Um, and that vanilla is like a little bit weird on the end. So I get why people don't really like that beer. 
per se, but I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, but they both were like blown away by French toast and, and Kevin, my brother's roommate was like, our uh, neighbor was like blown the fuck away by last snow. <laughs> like, like everyone else, like except for me, him, his <laughs> wife, okay. my brother's wife, my brother, all trying it for the first time. And I'm like, I've, yeah, had last, down the street. What the fuck? I've had last snow yeah, like yeah. like hundreds of times, thirty yeah. times yeah. now, and I'm like, I'm just drinking my glass. Like, wow, this is such a great beer. It's amazing. And then like they're trying it, they're like, holy shit, this beer is fucking awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know it's dumb, good. Dumb. Yeah, you didn't yeah. know. Like to me, it's like you didn't know about last snow. I've been hearing about last snow for fucking four years. Yeah, yeah. You know, like or well, three years because they're three years yeah. anniversary. But I'm like three years. You know, that beer has been like the top beer from them One of the best beers you can get ever like i had a funky buddha, i had styles. a funky buddha event where they had a keg that was bad and they sent me a keg of last snow to replace it and i was like yes <laughs> this is fucking <laughs> awesome yeah. and uh and it was like the you know it was like the big draw beer it was the rice krispies uh treat beer that coming came, out that's coming out very soon what came the out they have this recording came out but it already came out it's probably sold out i probably um, have a bottle or two I hope <laughs> it, uh, but that beer was going to be my big draw beer for the event and the keg was bad. And this was two years ago. And, uh, I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? My, we've been advertising this event for a month yeah. and the, the biggest draw beer of the event is, is a bad keg, keg and yeah. they're, they're returning it. And the guy's like, I'll send you a German chocolate, uh, a German chocolate, chocolate cake. And I'm like, I already have a German chocolate cake. That doesn't help me. Yeah. Like like having two kegs of it isn't any better for my event. You're replacing right. a beer that I lost with a beer I already have. Right. So I had to go through Brown and argue and argue and argue. And uh, I got in contact with Funky Buddha, and they were just like, no, dude, we'll send you the last snow. Here, send me up a keg. That day, came in. I'm like, no shit. I'm like, this event just got really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, everybody. I like, had to put out a Facebook thing. Hey, everybody. Excellent. Just no so you know, crispy, the Rice Krispies is gone, snow. but um, we replaced it with Last Snow, and everybody's like, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, they tried those beers, and then uh, I went to I went to the bottle shop after that. We drank those three beers, and then we went to the bottle shop uh, before dinner, uh-huh. and we're, we walk in, and I just asked the guy, I'm like, well, one, I got the Avery uh, barrel-aged vanilla stout, fucking great beer, <sighs> and uh, at this bottle shop, $12 for a bomber of Avery like a, van- a vanilla barrel aged stout. And I'm like, all right, so I'll, I'll pick that up. And then I, and then I'm like walking up to the counter. I just asked the guy, I'm like, he's like eating fucking Asian noodles behind the counter, like super chill. They have a drive through at this bottle shop. And, uh, normally it's kind of a sketchy thing that most bottle shops have a drive through. It's kind of sketch. If you know what you want, they just, they may get an extra markup for oh, walking sure. 10 yeah. feet for you. That's yeah. it. But, yeah. um, I'm like, asking, I'm like, do you guys get that, uh, the funky Buddha French toast? And he's like, yeah, man, nobody really has ever, nobody asked me about it, but it's in the back. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and he just walks out and I'm like, how much is it? He's like $8 or $9. I'm like, so is, there, is there a limit? <laughs> I'm like, that's $2 more than the brewery is charging. All right. Yeah, I'll take it. So I paid, Fuck. I paid a $2 upcharge on a fucking brewery release beer. At a bottle shop in Jupiter, and nobody even knew it existed. Well, French Toast is, is they, they've they not brewery release. Well, no, I'm saying the brewery release was $7 a bottle. Oh, well, pricing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid $9 yeah, yeah, yeah. At, a, at a store, at a store which right. also makes me wonder how these bottle shops make money, but whatever. It's besides Fuck the point. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, awesome spot. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be heading down there next time I go down south. Hell yeah. For sure. All that extra room. Avery Bomber. Fuck. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, once again, this bittersweet episode. I don't even know. What, I don't even know how to close this out. I'm trying not to cry. We're at just the kidding. Bar. I'm not crying. We're at, we're at, <laughs> like, thank you for listening at the brewery episode. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can listen to all the shows on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Literally every platform mm-hmm. possible. Nailed them all. We are there because we're podcast whores, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Uh, but yeah, check, come to Red Cyphers, check it out. They have great things coming, great beers. Get the Death Roll and the Get Carl. The <laughs> Death Roll and Carl. Great friends of the show. Ryan's awesome. Everyone here is really great. Treat us well. Um, so we're, we're big friends and fans of Red Cyphers. So wrapping up this bittersweet circle, as always, I am Mike. I'm Jeff. That's Jeff. Hollywood. And until next time, we'll see you guys on your computer screen. I'm just kidding. We'll see you guys at the bar. <laughs> <laughs>